Blessed be the name of the Lord. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. You already stand so we can open the word of the Lord in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 9. Actually, Mark chapter 10. Chapter 10. The blind of Jericho. Mark Já só aqui até agora. Ele não falou desse plano. Mark 9. Mark is actually 10. 10, the blind of Jericho. From verse, from verse 46. Forty-six. Thus is the word of our God. From the first forty-six it says the following. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude blind, Bartimaeus, the son of the Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have, com have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answering and said, said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your, your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him in the road. Lord, we thank you for the fellowship and the, the deliverance of the precious blood of Jesus, for the opportunity that you give us to once again enter into your Holy of Holies and to present before you and plead, Lord, that your word may once again tonight in this place may bring joy to our hearts. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. In Jericho, in the past, was a city that was cursed. It was cursed by God. And when the people of God, after walking for 40 years throughout the desert towards the Promised Land, they passed by the Jordan River. And the first city that they found is a fortified city. The wall of the city was so tall that people would build houses on top of the wall. And God, God destroyed that city. It was not the hand of men that destroyed it. The, the walls were destroyed by God himself. And Joshua, a servant of God, cursed that city. So whoever built this city again, their older son will die. And when they put the, the gates of the city, their youngest son will also be uh, lost. They will lose their inheritance. And they also they lose, lose their, first, their firstborn and their youngest. And that's what happened in the days of King Ahab. A man called Eliel, he was, he, he was Bilinite, he was from Bethlehem. No, he was Bilitite, he was from Beth, Bethel. And then Bethel means the house of God. So the man left the house of God, Bethel, in order to rebuild what God had destroyed. in order to bring back what God had cursed. And that's the man that left the house of the Lord. 
So then he loses the inheritance, he loses there a new birth. His two children, they both die. But after the fulfillment of that prophecy, and many years had already passed, and he, he may have thought that this would never take place, but the Word of God says that the heavens and the earth may pass, but my word shall never pass, and blessed be the name of the Lord for this. So he didn't believe in the promise, he didn't believe in the prophecy, he didn't believe in the word of God. So then the curse came upon his life. But the men of this city afterwards, you know what happened? What did they have to do with it? So then there comes a moment in the time of the prophet called Prophet Elisha. And the men of this city, they sought Elisha known as a man of God and go to the man of God and explain the situation that city was. So the word says, my brother, that the water of that city was bitter water and the land was unfertile. So then Elisha put salt on this dish and go to the flow of water and chose the salt on the, the flow, the source of water, and the water that was bitter became fresh water, and the, the land became fertile, stopped being sterile, and now became a blessed land. So now we see the great love of God towards man. There was a curse, there was a judgment, but afterwards, God comes with providence, with mercy. And the mercy of God is the reason why we are not destroyed. So he removes the bitterness and exchanges it to the sweetness of salvation. The bitterness of sin to the sweetness of salvation. And the Bible says, that my brethren, that Jesus now passing by Jericho and that city no longer had that curse. And the Bible says that after he went to Jericho, he had already gone to another region. And now he was going towards Jerusalem. And there were three paths for him to go to Jerusalem because the people of those days of Jesus, you know, the day in which he passed through Jericho was a time of feast. There was a feast of the Passover, the tabernacles, and the uh, harvest. And one of the feasts, I believe, it was the Passover. I'm not sure. I don't remember. So then the people went out to walk and there was there were three routes uh, the route through the shore of the sea called the uh, sea uh, path and uh, the path that would go through Samaria and we spoke about Samar the Samaritan woman and this third one the longest path but it was known as the path of the kings and the king Jesus, he was going through the route of the kings, of course. That's why he chose this route. And the Bible says, my brother, that Jesus goes through this path, and together with Jesus and his disciples, a, a great crowd, they were all going to Jerusalem to celebrate this feast. And you see, my brethren, afterwards, that when Jesus enters into Jerusalem, the word says there was a triumphant entrance. It is written like that, where the children, the people, began to say, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest. And the Bible says, my brethren, that there, there was a, a great crowd, the disciples and Jesus. But the Bible also describes the presence of a man. A man that has no name. An unknown man is not known to this day. A man that for these people was an insignificant man that had no worth, was despised and humiliated. And this man, he was blind, he was, he was uh, homeless. And the Bible says that he was on the side of the, sh the road, but he was not on the, the road. He was not on the path. He was on the side of the path. And it is interesting to note that the Jews, when somebody had a, a physical deficiency or some sort of sicknesses, uh, sickness that was incurable, 
the understanding of the Jews was that that person was a person that was cursed. Bartimaeus means son of Tim Timaeus. Bar means son and Timaeus is, is a person. So Timaeus is, if you go to the Greek, is honored, exalted. But if you go to Hebrew, Timur means impure, impurity. So was the Midi the son of impurity, the son of sin, with the son of David? And the name David sin, so, uh, means beloved. And the son of, of sin with the son of the beloved. And when Jesus is baptized, a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son and that I am pleased with. So then there was there Jesus, the son of blessing, and a son that was carrying a curse upon his life. And the Jews believed that whoever is, was lame was a cursed person. And when Jesus goes to heal someone that was another blind, uh, uh, blind from birth, when the, the disciples asked him, Jesus, who sinned? Was he who sinned or were his parents? And Jesus said, was not him or his parents because it was to be fulfilled in him the glory of God. But that was the understanding. In the Old Testament, in Ezekiel, the Lord says that the son was not going to carry the, the curse of the father and the father is not going to carry the curse of the son. The soul that sins, that's the one who is going to die. But the people understood that time that whoever had a disease, that person was cursed. So Bartimaeus was a cur is known as a person that was cursed. That's that's why he was rejected. That's was why he was on the side of the world. That's why he was despised. And we can even think how great was the yoke on the life of this man. Can you imagine, my brother and sister? You who are here with us, carrying upon you a curse. Every person that look at you would say, this one is the son of a father who was cursed. So that was the sad reality of Bartimaeus, a man without a name. And the word says that Bartimaeus, blind, he was seated on the side of the road and he was asking for alms. And what could be left for this man to do? What hope could be available to this man? He was marked by a curse. He was uh, despised by everyone. What a difficult situation. A man that no one cared for or cared about. But the word says, my brethren, that part of me is He was known here, not because of the name, because no one knows his name. I mentioned many times, but he was known by, because of his deficiency. Bartimaeus, the blind. That person, there was a label upon him. Sometimes people like to label others. Oh, that person, the short one, <laughs> or this or that the maimed, the deficient, the crazy. That was the last name of that individual. Bartimaeus, the blind, the homeless. And there, there he was, sitting on the side of the world. And he was asking for alms. And he his livelihood depended on uh, the generosity the generosity of the people that pass by. And people only give whatever they have left. Because I'm going to give this to him because I already have enough. And that's how it, how it goes. The despise was present in the life of that individual. But the word says, my brethren, that he heard Someone told him, he, he heard the noise of the crowd, the, the great crowd, they were all going to 
Jerusalem. He was on the side of the road, and he realized in that moment, he awoke for the moment, and he, he began to ask, what crowd is this? And the word says that somebody told him that it was Jer Jesus of Nazareth who was passing by there. And I believe that it was not one of the disciples because uh, once they, Jesus asked the disciples, people said that I'm the prophet, and who do you say I am? And Peter, used by the Lord, received, received a revelation from the Father. He said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Jesus was not from Nazareth. Jesus comes from eternity. He come from, comes from heaven. He is the Christ, the anointed by God. He saved the world. But somebody gave uh, the wrong information to poor Bartimaeus. Even the information that came to him came with uh, the information that came to him was wrong. Jesus of Nazareth. Can anything good come from, come out of Nazareth? Some time uh, ago, Jesus was in Nazareth because he resided. He lived on on that place for a certain period of his life and he entered into the temple on a sa Sabbath like today and was given to Jesus of Nether the scroll of Isaiah Isaiah, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken 60, 61 and he says, my brethren I'm going to pick up here because I don't have a good, very good memory Isaiah Isaiah 60 if I'm not mistaken Isaiah 61 the spirit of the, the Jehovah is upon me because the Lord anointed me to preach good news of the meek and restore the contract of the heart, to proclaim freedom of the captive and opening the gates of the, the one who are in prison, and to preach about the acceptable year of the Lord. And on that day, on that temple, people looked at Jesus and, and Jesus said, Today is being fulfilled in your midst, these scriptures. And there's a text that says that the following, the opening up the eyes of the blind. And in another text, it says also this. If I'm not mistaken, is when he, he is in Nazareth. And you know what happened in Nazareth? They kicked him out of the city. Jesus was kicked out of his own city. The people of Nazareth didn't believe him. In Isaiah 53, he was despised, the, the man of pain, the, the was tried in work. That was the situation also of the, the homeless, the Bartimaeus, the blind man. But he heard uh, that Jesus and Nazareth was, was passing by. He heard wrong information. Jesus, Nazareth, was was killed when Pilate he asked to crucify Jesus he put there four letters above the cross I and R E Jesus Nazarene, Nazarene the king of the Jews Jesus man Jesus you know, a flawed man Jesus that dies but Jesus son of David is the one who died and resurrected. He overcame death. He was victorious upon death. Jesus, not Jesus from Nazareth that was kicked out of his city, but Jesus, son of David. But when he hear Jesus, Nazareth, he begins to cry out. He began to shout. He began to plead. He began to implore so that Jesus would hear him, so that his plea would come to Jesus. But he didn't plead for Jesus of Nazareth, because Jesus of Nazareth would not be able to give him what he needed for his life. So then he pleaded for Jesus, son of David, the one who has all the power and authority. He pleaded for the Christ, for the anointed of God, for the Savior of the world. That was his plea. So then he said the following, and he began to plead, and he began to say, how interesting that is, that he was pleading, but he was also proclaiming, he was 
announcing, he was proclaiming, he was evangelizing. He was saying to the crowd that was there with Jesus, this is not from Nazareth. This one is the son of David, is the savior of the world. You are seeing less than I. <laughs> the blind was able to see more than the, the rest of the people there. The Bible says that the faith comes from hearing, hearing the, the word of the Lord. And he heard the descriptions, he heard the testimonies, he, uh, the healings and the deliverances, the wonders that the Lord had operated through Jesus and he identified Jesus. He heard the scriptures. The Bible says, Jesus says, examine the scriptures because they are the ones who testify of me. And note that eternal life comes from it. So he heard and discerned that man there was no, no not only a prophet, it was not Jesus of Nazareth, but he was Christ, the Son of God, the Son of David. My brother, he begins to plead and he begins to proclaim, he begins to preach. And what says, my brother, that he makes a plea, a supplication. He cries out. He calls a, the attention to himself and he proclaims. He announces to everyone who Jesus was. And afterwards, he makes a supplication. He makes a prayer and intercession for his own life. He says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Because Jesus, if my father was the one who sinned, or if it was me, have mercy on me. People are saying that I'm under a curse because of my father. But if it was my, well, my father, if it was me, who was the guilty party, have mercy on me. That's why he was asking Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Take me out of this misery, of this miserable life. Have compassion. Feel my pain. Feel the situation in which I was placed. Look to me and see my situation, how deplorable situation in which I am. Blind, homeless, on the side of the road. Lord, take me out of this misery. What a miserable life. Have mercy on me. My brethren, the word says that many reproached him, trying to make him be quiet. There are going to be always many people, many obstacles to prevent you, to prevent men from com coming to God. Many will try to prevent, to hinder the plea of the one who is in need. Many are trying to stop you or I to reach the blessing the Lord has for our lives. And in Jericho, two things interesting happened. First, Jesus he saves a man called Zacchaeus, a rich man. In Jericho, the crowd also tried to prevent Zacchaeus from coming to Jesus, but he made an effort. He climbed a tree and he received the blessing that he needed for his life. And here, Bartimaeus, he was sitting on the side of the road. Once again, the multitude. What a miserable multitude. The man was blind. And in the situation he was. Would not have been easier for the crowd to say, Are you crying out? Oh, I'm going to help you to get there. Would not have been a noble act. Would not have been fairer when a man, a, paral a paralytic man was carried by four people there was a paralyzed person four people went there and brought that person to the presence of Jesus the city was the, the, the crowd was preventing him to come closer then they climbed on a, on a house and, and brought him down through the ceiling and Mark, Luke, John 
I have hunger and you gave me food and I thirst you will give me water. When I got sick, you came to visit. Uh, I was a foreign, you hosted, you gave me harbor. And whenever you do this, for one of my small ones, you do this to me. So the Christian man, he has this obligation to bring man to God or, or not to prevent man from coming to, the, to God. And you see people pleading, supplicating for the Lord to have mercy on their lives. And many reproached Bartimaeus uh, to be quiet. But the word says that he was crying out even louder. And blessed be the Lord. My, bre my brethren, be persistent. Knock, knock, and the door will be open to you. If it's not open yet, keep knocking. Jacob, he fought with, with the angel. And before the angel left, he said, No, you're going to bless me or you're not going to let you go. And Bartimaeus knew what he wanted. But there are people that don't know what they want. And there are people that, on the first obstacle, they give up. And a certain time, in Brazil, a couple came to one of my churches. And there was a person that came to them and said, this is not a place for you. You know what this couple did? This is not your house. This is God's house. And God does not choose a person of another. And this couple stay is still to this day in the presence of the Lord. The Son of God has to know what they want to do. It's not uh, giving up on the first obstacle. Are you going to give up? You're going to give up on the blessing that God has for your life just because someone asked you to be quiet? What is this person? Who this person is to do something like this? What is their authority to do this? They don't have any authority. They reproached him and kept cry, crying out even louder. And when he was pleading, it was because the pain was greater. His suffering was even greater. When they plead for Jesus, he was even hoping that someone would help him in, in this cry, in this plea. Cry with the ones who cry and rejoice with the ones who rejoice. But there was no one to help Bartimaeus. And my brethren, sometimes there is no one for us. The ones who come, they come to hinder us, to ask you to be quiet and prevent you from receiving the blessing that the Lord has for your life. But he was crying out even louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. And the word says that the plea of that man without a name caused Jesus to stop. And the Bible says that Joshua, the one I spoke about in the beginning, once he pleaded to the Lord that the moon and the sun, they stopped. The sun and the moon, they, are, they make reference to Jesus and the church. And here when Bartimaeus, he pleads, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. The Son of Justice stood on that place. The light was shown. The people that was in darkness saw a great light, and the light on the valley of death, the light of the Lord was shown. Blessed be the Lord. And Jesus stopped. My brother, Jesus could even have gone away. He could have gone towards Bartimaeus, but he didn't do this. He stopped. In another text, he said, I'm he said, I'm going to be here, and now you, my disciples, you go there. The role of the church is, is this, to go there, to bring the one who are in need. Jesus said, I'm going to stay here, and you, my disciples, you go there and bring him. Jesus stopped and he said, and there is another version of this story that says he ordered other people to go. It was not necessary for Jesus to order to bring this man. The disciples and the crowd should have brought him to Jesus. 
But since no one, none did, then he ordered to bring this man to him. The word says, my brethren, that Jesus stopped. And we can't even think about, oh, let's stop everything at this moment. In order to analyze who Jesus is. And what is our role on his ministry. If anybody asks you who Jesus is for you, what are you going to answer at this moment? The one who is in need. Who Jesus is for you? Is the one from Nazareth? Is he son of David, the Christ, the Savior of the world, the divine light, the salt of the earth, the good shepherd, the Lamb of God, the Alpha, Omega, the Lion, the tribe of Judah, or a significant Jesus uh, from the town of Nazareth. Let's stop here so that we can analyze the situation. How many people in the world in which we are living today are not going through the same problems of Bartimaeus? How many men or, or women in this last hour are being marginalized? They are despised, feeling that they are unworthy of receiving a blessing from the Lord. How many are pleading at this moment? And no one appears to help them. And Jesus stopped and gave an order. Look, go and bring the needed. The role of the church, our role, is to bring the one who is in need. And conduct the one who is in need into the presence of the Lord. That's the true work of the Lord. They call the blind men. And we see here the call of the Lord to man's life. God sometimes he presents himself to man. In another circumstance, Jesus presents to man. In another situation, an angel will present himself to a man. But now Jesus used a man to call a man. And now he's calling man to call other men and women into his presence. Because if you stop pleading, if you stop calling and stop evangelizing, even the stones, they are going to start crying out and start evangelizing. But the Lord gave this role to us. He chose us to go out in the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. That's the role of the church. Well, uh, it's not when you hear the, the one who is in need, in need calling upon the Lord and preventing him from coming to God. Call the blind man. Glory to God. Finally. No, those men, they had a new... They were talking in a different way. Now the conversation was different. Once Jesus called him, when Jesus asked to call the blind man, now the situation was different. But earlier they were asking him to be quiet and to stay where he was because he was a sinner. He was a man that was marginalized, he was despised, he was a cursed person. But now, when Jesus asked to, to call him, the conversation was different. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's what it is. This is a new way. There's a new conversation here taking place. And it says, Be of good cheer. What does that mean? It means to be f to have faith. A brother and sister. Have faith. Be have joy. Be have willingness. Jesus asked to call you. My brother and sister, you are here despised, humiliated, with bowed head, marginalized. You have, a, you have been labeled. But Jesus, son of David, told me to call you. Blessed be the Lord. 
The king has to call you. The king of kings, the Lord of lords, has to call you because it's a blessing for your life. He has a solution to your problem. The king is asking to call you. Be a good cheer. Till now, they brought a word of hope. This man had a life without hope and a, f a future. Now, when people now people go to him and say, "The Son of David, Jesus, asked to call you," they brought joy, help, and refreshing to the heart of this man, gave him strength. My brethren, when you are in a place where you, your life is just destroyed, it's over, and you only hear bad news come to you, oh, that's where you are, you deserve this, your life is like this. The man is in a, in a bad situation, he even get worse. Crumbling. That's why he has a cape. You know, to hide, so no one would see him. But when you come to him and say, my brother and sister, the Lord has a blessing for your life. You are, you are sick, but the Lord is going to heal you. The Lord is going to restore your health. God loves you. There was a man who was paralyzed on the gate called Beauty in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. To some of the God, Peter and John, when, when they were passing by, going to the, toward the temple, they saw that man, they said, we don't have gold or silver, but what we have, we can give you. What do we have? What do we have? We can only give what we have. What we have, we give you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. My brother, that word was able to make this man stand up my brother and sister a word in spirit can make someone stand up in the name of Jesus get up and walk and this man was paralyzed he was a layman you know what happened he got up walked and even chow, uh, jumped and gave glory to the Lord his life was restored we are being called to restore lives to save lives that's the role of the church it's a word of encouragement. In the word that was, there was uh, a flyer that was that said a word of hope. Bartimaeus, he didn't need reproach. He needed a word of encouragement and hope. He needed a word of life. He needed a word, someone to say something in order for him to get up and get in, get out of that situation. Get up. Take a stand. Until that moment, Bartimaeus was sitting down. But when the servant of God goes there, delivered a word from God, from Jesus to his life, the Bible says, Be of good cheer. This, this word, Be of good cheer, was used by Jesus. You know that? In the world who have afflictions, Be a good cheer, blessed be the name of the Lord. So the servant says, use the word that he heard from Jesus. Same words, be a good cheer. It was said, my brethren, that rise, he is calling you. And already said, rejoice, be happy. Glorify the name of the Lord. You know why? Because tonight the Lord is calling you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord have a blessing for you, your life, my brother and sister. The Bible says, my brother, that when he took up, up on his cape, before meeting Jesus, he took his cape away. His cloak was an identification. And people saw him. The first thing that they saw was a man wearing a cloak. And then they would say, oh, that's the cursed man. He's not carrying his cloak anymore. You know why, my friend? Because the one who is in Christ, uh, that goes to Christ, is a new creature. Everything has been made new. The cloak was the resource that he had to 
have shelter and to protect himself. That's why he had. And every person who hear the call of the Lord for their lives have to leave something behind. You know that? They have to leave. When Abraham, his name was Abraham, and God called him, he said, leave your land and from the midst of your relatives. When Jesus calls his first two disciples, Peter and Andrew, they were in a boat fixing up the fishing net. And the Bible says they soon, soon after they left the nets behind and followed Jesus. James and John, and they were in the boat of the father of John. No one remembers, I don't remember now. They left the boat of the father. Zebedee is. Thank you very much. That's what it is. So they left the boat of Zebedee is the father and followed Jesus. And Matthew was he was um, uh, he was in an office and then went out to follow Jesus. The Samaritan woman she left her vessel of water and followed Jesus. Zacchaeus, he left the, the fig tree and all of us in order to walk in order to walk in the presence of Jesus we need to leave, to leave something behind he left that cloak because that cloak had no use for him anymore he didn't need the protection of this cloak anymore you know why? because the protection that he had now was the Lord the one who lives in the shelter of the High most, the shade of the Almighty will rest. He didn't need the cloak anymore or alms. He didn't need it to, in order to gather what people gave him. You know why? Because God was going to sustain him. And God is the one who sustains us. When we elect God as a shepherd and our guide, our savior. And he left the cape and then he got up and went to be with Jesus. And now emphasizing the power of his of the word. Those men, they brought a message from that man. For that man, they said, "Rise, he's calling you. Be a good cheer." The individual got up. Until that moment, he was sitting down. The word was able to got this man standing. My brethren, we need to bring care, bring a word that will cause people to stand up so that people may have hope. And that's what happened at that moment. He brought hope to his heart. Now I'm going to be able to go to Jesus. He was not able to go before because he was blind. There was a crowd. How could he identify? And now he received help, somebody that would guide him, that would give him a word of hope to his life. And he went to be with Jesus. He was not going to be with the crowd or with the disciples. He went to be with Jesus. You know why? Because salvation is an individual experience between, between you and God. It's a dialogue. He knew Jesus from hearing about. And you know, the Old Testament, the book of Job, who suffered so much, he said, before I knew of hearing about, but now my eyes can see you. Salvation is to see Jesus, the faith who guide men. But the one, what saves us is a, a personal experience with Jesus. And the Bible says, my brother, he went to be with Jesus. And Jesus speaks to, with him. What a wonderful thing. When you hear the voice of Jesus, hear the voice of Jesus that is so tender and sweet. Have you seen my brethren? Have you had this meeting with Jesus, this dialogue with God? Have you heard the voice of the Lord speaking with you at this moment? What do you want me to do for you? Look at this question. What is your need? What is your problem? What is your necessity for your life? 
What do you want me to do for you? What of a wonderful God. God that does not place any limit. A God that you can ask for the impossible. Because our God is the God of the impossible. What do you want me to do for you? My brethren, in this service here, what is your need? What do you desire God to do for your life? Don't ask to me because I cannot do anything for you. Speak with Jesus. Lord, I want to see or that I am healed that, or that I am baptized with the Holy Spirit or that I am having, uh, that I will have a, a wonderful experience with you individually and that from this day forward I will be a new individual and an instrument in your hands. What you want me to do for you? And Jesus, and the blind man answered to Jesus. He knew what he wanted. But before answering, he deals with Jesus as, as Lord in a respectful way. He says, Rabboni, Lord, the rabbi. comes into the presence of the Lord all the fear of the Lord in his heart with all the respect because he was before the son of David he was not before any other person but he was before the God Almighty he was before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords so he had to treat him in a different way he said Lord that I Rabboni that I may receive my sight so that it may get out of darkness and that you change my life that I be able to see that was his desire he wanted to see and I told you that this thing that he asked was impossible and sometimes my brethren medicine says that it is impossible and science says it is impossible and scientists say it's impossible we're going through a moment of pandemic that and we know that science and technology, you know, it's good, it's important, but it does not resolve all the problems. The one who was blind from birth, he says something interesting to the crowd. He says, never from the antiquity has opened the eye of a man from birth. You can look on Google, on the literature. If a blind from birth was able to see again, you can look. It doesn't happen. No prophet from the Old Testament. There were, the, there were prophets that stopped the sun and, and, and the moon. They opened the Red Sea and the Jordan River and raised the dead and did everything but there was no description of anyone that opened the eyes of the blind from birth only Jesus did this and that individual he asked the impossible and Jesus himself said the following what is impossible for man is possible for God everything is possible to the one who believes and in the word says, my brother, that the Bartimaeus, he had faith. The faith is impossible to please the Lord. The one who comes close to the Lord, it's necessary for them to believe that He exists. So if I come close to God, I have to believe in God. If I ask a, quest, uh, a favor to God, I have to believe that God's going to answer my request. Otherwise, I don't believe. So the concern of Jesus for this moment exactly regarding faith. How can the Son of Man come and not find faith upon the face of the earth? That's why what this concern is. You know, what do you want me to do, Master, that I see? I want to operate the impossible in my life. I want to have my, my, my sight restored. I want to be a new creature, a, new, a different person. And Jesus says to that man, and the service will be over in a few minutes. We are going to go away. And Jesus, that's what Jesus said. 
What do you want? I want to want to have my sight restored. What a blessing for our life. You who are here, my brother and sister, and you who are participating with us through Zoom. Jesus asked a question, you gave an answer. And now Jesus has another word to give. You can go away. Go ahead. Go because whatever you asked with faith, you have already been able to achieve. Go because of faith, because you believed. I already operated a miracle in your life on your behalf and to your benefit. Now we can go. My brother and sister, Jesus sent, asked him to go away, but he didn't go. Is Bartimaeus stubborn? No, he was not stubborn. No, because he wanted something else. Sometimes a person comes to Jesus, please, cries, cries out. Was, that person is brought to the presence of the Lord and receive the blessing for their lives and then they go away and never return. And you have no obligation to return. Jesus is never limited a healing, a deliverance to an obligation. He said, oh, I'm going to heal you in order for you to serve me. Or I'm going to open a, a, a new job, give you a new job so that you can serve me. I'll bless you so that you can serve me. No. God never interfered in the free will of man. And he will never interfere in our free will. Ten blind, ten people with leprosy were healed. They didn't return. Except one. But Bartimaeus, he, he didn't return. He stayed. Because he understood the project of God for his life, he wanted to be able to see in order to be saved. And in order to be saved, he needed to receive faith in order to walk on the path. He didn't want to be on the side of the road or, or the road anymore. He wanted to be on the road. And Jesus is the road, is the path and truth and the life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Darkness, never again. Because he now had a new experience of salvation. He had the light of life. And now go, your faith has saved you. Jesus had already given the result because he knew the heart of that man. So now he was going to follow Jesus, not because of obligation, but because of gratitude. What am I going to give the Lord for all the benefit that he has given me? I'll take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. He was already calling upon the name of the Lord, who was blind, and now will continue to call upon the name of the Lord. He has a destination, he has now a direction. He knew where he where he wanted to go and with whom he wanted to go. Jesus was passing by Jerusalem in order to, to get into the triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. I cannot miss this opportunity. I want to be able to see in order to walk on the path. I want to be able to see in order to see Jesus the altar and finisher of my faith, who is the target of my vocation. Rabboni, I want to have my sight restored. And he said, go, faith has saved you. And he immediately saw and he followed Jesus on the way. My brother, he never left Jesus. And he entered with Jesus in Jerusalem. And when he used the expression, Son of David, when you go back and read on the text, when he entered with Bartimaeus in the temple, when he entered with Bartimaeus in Jerusalem, you know what people were saying? What he said in the beginning, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed be the one who comes in, comes in the name of the Lord. And when Jesus entered into the temple in Jerusalem, he cleans up the temple. You know what the children said? Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Like the, imagine how efficient was the evangelization. The man was blind. He proclaimed the message. And afterward, everybody was saying the same thing. Hosanna to the Son of David. You know what Hosanna means? Save me. Save me, Son of David. Save me, Lord. It's the same thought, same thing. Son of David, have mercy on me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because Bartimaeus was seeking salvation. He was seeking redemption. He wanted a transformation of life. 
you want it to be from that moment forward, have a new life, because the one who is in Christ, I want to say once again, is a new cre creation, and everything has been made new. That's why it says in my songbook, what I was once I no longer am, because I now have a meeting with the new Lord. Amen? Now, let's sing a song. I'd like to invite you to stand up. The Lord has shown tonight a man. He was concerned with many news. And those many news has caused his faith to go down, to shrink on the, our Savior and Jesus Christ. And he has believed in many theories. Theory is something that cannot be proven, right? But God says the following Test me. You cannot tr uh, try the Lord, but you can test the Lord. In the days of Bartimaeus, there was a lot of conspiracy to prevent him to come to Jesus. But the conspiracy, the impediments, they didn't prevent him because he believed that God, through Jesus, son of David, would resolve his problems and he would save him. He believed and he saw the glory of God. My brethren, if you believe in Jesus, you will see the glory of the Lord be manifested in your life. Theories, conspiracies, we don't care about it because we have a destination which is eternity. A servant, uh, a sister, she has a garden. In this garden, she collects a bouquet of flowers, and with these flowers, 
she, she desires to offer those flowers to the Lord. And the war concern of this woman is to, if the Lord will please with this bouquet of flowers. Because <coughs> she believed that it was too simple. And I'm going to tell you, there was no one that was, was, was a person, the simplest person. Jesus was not a... The Lord loves the simple things. Look at the nature. The nature is amazing. There's an individual from from the United States that 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 sang a song about a wonderful world. And it is God is, loves simplicity and the humbleness of this servant. And then tonight the Lord is receiving this offering from the hand of this sister. This book of flowers, this celebration, this glorification, this adoration. And that's what truly pleases the Lord. Lord, we praise you. We're thankful because once again we're in your presence. Because you heard our plea, our supplication. You have answered our prayer. You have removed us from the side of the road or from the darkness and brought us into your presence. Praise you, Lord, because we know that our destination is to enter in with you in the heavenly Jerusalem, Lord. Bless your people, your church. Give us a night of peace in your presence. We plead to you, Lord, for all your assistance and also in the services this weekend, so that in each one your name may be glorified. We pray in the name of Jesus, and in your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. The ones who desire can receive in the church an assistance. The ones who are with us participating through Zoom have a couple of brethren here that can give you the proper assistance. Pastor Taylor continues sick and he needs our prayers. And uh, Pastor Ronildo, he was sick and he has sought understand what uh, happens he did a couple exams he hasn't had a result but we know that the prayer of the church has has uh, can be answered and they the ones the Bible says that who want the brand go and pray with lay of hands they will be saved so that the Lord may re restore the health of well, the, the pastors and the, the ones who remain who are sick and you are called to come once again and tomorrow we'll have another service of glorification to, to the Lord and it's going to be group C but who, you who visit us you can participate on every service and uh, to all the peace, the peace of the Lord <laughs>